Hello, my front end friends. If you've ever had to animate something like this, which is kind of fun, I did this in a longer video a while back, but I want to focus on one trick that I did on this uh, when I recreated this CSS day layout uh, for the speakers. And just really fast, if you do want to watch my talk from it, it is now live. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, it was a fun, fun thing to be on stage for CSS day. But uh, yeah, for here, there's a problem when we do these types of effects and you might've noticed it already, but let's slow this down a little bit. I'm going to do this as 2000 milliseconds instead. When I go this way, everything's fine. We can see Steven here. He's looking good. But when I go like that, it jumps down below the image below him. If we look look where his chin is right now, you can see that other image pops in front. And that's because when we're doing this, one of the things that's getting changed is Z index. But Z index can't transition the way things like our width, our height, and scales and all these other things can actually transition. But that just means as soon as I come off, it just reverts to not having a Z index anymore, goes into the regular flow, let's call it. Uh, and then it jumps behind elements that come after it. It's even worse here with Julia. So there you can see like there's several images on hers that are doing that. So how can we fix it? There's two different solutions. Uh, I use an animation for it. I prefer the animation, but I want to show you the way you can do it with a transition instead as well. And so due to that, all we need to do is cause the Z index transition to happen once the transitions are all finished. And so here I've updated my code to get this to work. And the trick for this is I'm doing a, my 2000 millisecond for all the different things that I'm transitioning, except my Z index where I'm doing the same transition, but I'm also delaying it by 2000 milliseconds. But I'm only doing this on the initial like normal default selector. And I'm not doing it for my hover. In fact, on the hover, I'm saying that we have the Z index here and I'm doing a transition delay of zero milliseconds for everything. Because when I'm in my hover or my focus state, I want it to immediately go to the higher Z index. And then when I come off, I want it to wait until the animation is done. And then we can, then it will transition, but that transition instantly happens because of the way the Z index transitions work. So you can see that now it's working as expected and the items will work. Uh, it's a little bit mucked up there because of how slow the animation is happening, uh, as you can see, because uh, there they're both getting the same level of Z index. But uh, if you had it a bit faster because of this slow, uh, I wanted to highlight it, but we're, you're seeing that it does work. We can actually probably prevent issues like this from happening, where if you're hovering on multiple things at the same time, uh, by looking if another sibling, you know, based on the order, you could maybe play with stuff. I'm not going to stress about that because if we made all of these shorter, we're not going to see it. The problem with doing it this way, and this could definitely work if you just have like a very simple transition where you just need to play with one thing. Uh, the reason I don't like necessarily doing this is let's just come here. We can just say transition 2000 milliseconds. Uh, and the reason I don't like doing it that way is just we have to list out everything and we have to just change the delay for the Z index. So what I actually prefer doing is creating some keyframes called Z index hack or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, where we're setting the keyframes at zero and at hundred percent. So the entire time the Z index will be at one. And the reason this works is because then what we could do is we could put that animation only on the element when it's not being hovered. So to do that, we can just come here. And I'm just using like an image selector in this case, or actually in this case, it's actually the images that are inside my links. That's why I'm position absoluting this. If you want to see how I actually built this up, because those images are together with these links. Uh, I have a longer video, as I mentioned, that I'll put a link to in the description on building the entire thing out. And so now what I can do is we can come here and we can say my A that is not uh, hover or focus. So as long as they're not being hovered or focused on, we can select the image that's a descendant of that. Uh, and again, that's just specific to this one use case. You get whatever selector you need for your item, but it has to be when it's not hovered or focused. Uh, and then we can say that this is a Z index. Whoops, <laughs> not like that. We want to say it's an animation of Z index index hack. Uh, and we had 2000 milliseconds, I guess. And you don't want to put a forwards here or anything like that. You want the animation to run. And then what this means is everything is has nothing on it basically now. There's no Z index being applied to anything. And then when I go on, let's just go on Josh here. When I'm hovering on Josh, it also doesn't have the animation. And then when I come off, it has it on there. So it has the Z index of one. And then as soon as that 2000 milliseconds is done, that animation goes away because we don't have the forwards on it or anything like that. So then it goes back to the default. The advantage here is we actually have a one here and a two here. So you actually get the different levels. So if I go here and then I go on to a different one, like that problem we were running into before when we switch people sort of goes away. It's a little buggy now because of how long the animation is once again, um, but it gets a little bit better. And if we bring this down to a reasonable time, 
uh, we shouldn't actually run into any of those li weird little glitches uh, that we are seeing because the animation's nice and snappy now. And so it will sort of flip over when we're in between the different states and we don't run into the issue that we had before with the items falling in the wrong direction. I do wanna say really fast, don't do this as a default. <laughs> um, this is happening to me because I'm using position absolute. If you're doing other things with like overlapping items with a grid or something, it is possible that you also will need to do this. It's only when you have to raise the Z index that you would need something like this to make sure that when you're coming off that it's not applying anymore. Uh, and if so, start by just doing your scaling up or your other things, because by default, you shouldn't run into this issue. But as soon as you bring positioning into it or there's overlapping for other reasons, and then you feel like you need Z index to prevent that from happening, then this is the type of thing that can come in and just help you get away from that weird, awkward thing where it jumps behind when you're not hovering anymore. Uh, and really fast, I just realized I didn't explain this part very well because I said nothing currently has the animation on it. When the page first loads, they'll all get that animation for the length of the animation, and then it goes away. So for the first 500 milliseconds that the page is loaded, they're all there, so they're all getting a Z index of one, then it goes away, they're all at their default Z index level now, and when I hover on it, it gets the scale of two, and when I remove, where it now matches this state, so it gets that uh, animation on it, and then it goes away. Uh, at the end of that. So I'll, yeah, there we go. I, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Again, if you'd like to see me actually build out this entire thing and how I sort of linked the, the links here with the images, you can watch that video. It is linked down in the description below, or you can check out my entire CSS day talk about why you should start over engineering your CSS. Uh, that is also linked down below. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.